I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Dover, Sherburn, and Dover, Sherburn Regional School Committees for Monday, November 2nd, 2020. This open meeting is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. Information on how to join remote school committee meetings and meeting agendas are posted on the Dover Sherburn District website. And having said that, I am going to hand it right over to Ann Hovey, our chair of the superintendent search team. Thanks, Ann. Thanks. Thanks, Brooke. I appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm glad to see that there are so many people who are participating. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is uh, we are very fortunate to have Carolyn Burke from NESDEC. She's going to talk a little bit about the process that she went through to collect uh, community input. And then we're gonna talk about the candidate profile, its purpose, um, and then the specifics of it. So Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Sorry. You're muted still, yeah. Carolyn? Thank you. Sorry, all right, I said thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. <laughs> um, well, I'm not sure if, if you all um, are aware of the community outreach process, but you had 13 focus groups and an online survey. Individuals contacted me by email if they chose, and there were people who I reached out to that the district wanted me to reach out to personally. We listened to all of those people who participated. We asked two questions. We asked, what is it that would make a superintendent a match for Dover Sherburn? So what is it you're looking for in a new superintendent? Because you could find five people who would make terrific superintendents, but not in Dover Sherburn. They might not be successful there. So we want to tease out what would make somebody successful in Dover Sherburn. So we asked, what are the qualities, characteristics, knowledge, experience, skills that you are looking for in a new superintendent? And what is it that you would like him or her to focus on? So we met with, there were 85 people who participated in focus groups or sent emails. And then there was another, um, I'd have to check with um, Christina, but there was probably about 200 people or over 200 people who participated in the process as a whole. We gathered that information and we gave the online data from the online survey and everything that people said by roll up like groups is available to school committee members. Um, uh, and we'll give you a link uh, to that or I can. And from that, we said, are there themes that come up? And we, we said, are there things that we're hearing from overlapping the groups and are there strong areas people want the superintendent to be competent across the board they want strength in every area but particular depth are there any areas where, where people mentioned over and over again that they were looking for particular depth we found those themes and we submitted them to the um, search subcommittee and the search subcommittee god love them went all through the data and developed a document from the school committee that Ann is going to present to you tonight. Is that, Ann, how it went on your end? Um, the members of the school committee have seen it. So okay. I've seen the, the draft of the candidate profile. Okay. So you have a draft profile to talk about tonight. And then um, that profile is used is given to the screening committee. When you put together a screening committee, they will have that document. And when we're training the screening committee and working with the screening committee, we emphasize that, that to use that lens when they're going through applications. And they're to use that lens and we'll work with them on developing their questions. And that lens when they're choosing whom to move forward to the uh, school committee. When the finalists are sent forward to the school committee, then you, the school committee, because it's your profile, will use that lens when you're making your decisions. So it's something to have in the back of your mind, something to keep, to keep um, in mind when you're assessing who would be a good fit for the district, the person who more closely or most closely matches the 
the profile. And, and that will be its use. So we're hoping tonight to get, to get it approved so that we can then um, stop preparing the document for use. And we would ask that you put your profile up on your website for candidates to view and for um, people to see the results of, of the community outreach process. Any questions for me? So, I, so Carolyn, is this um, how you traditionally you conduct searches, or has this year been particularly different given uh, COVID? Well, we usually do our focus groups in person, but other than that, um, so that people can see, you know, we read the room, we have charts up, and we write down everything that people say. So, if somebody jumps in or jumps out or has to leave early or come in late, they can see what everybody said. And people can say, you know, I want to go back and talk about point one or point two. Other than that, it was the same questions. And um, people were really good about, you'll see someone signed on here that says Librarian 3. <clears throat> That's actually Nancy Mara from NASDAQ. She and I were on all of the focus groups. And she was typing furiously. And I was writing when uh, people were talking so that we would catch capture all the nuances of what people said. So it's, it basically, uh, Anne, was the, was a similar process. We seldom have 13 focus groups. That was very different, but, um, but the process was the same. Well, and thank you so much for allowing us to have the 13 focus groups. And for folks to understand what we did is that usually the focus groups are a little bit longer and we opted to have them a little bit shorter and have more of them because we really wanted to make sure that everybody in the community who wanted access to a group could get access. So we could have afternoon times, evening times, different days. Um, and then we had groups for parents, students, teachers, administrators, support staff, community members, Boston parents, um, so that we tried to cover as many different constituencies, members of the community that we could. Um, so that's why we had, that's why there were so many of them. Um, and it's because it's important to get as much varied input as we, as we could. Um, Carolyn, can I ask you a little bit though about, to go into a little bit more detail about the candidate profile and is this designed to be, um, is this designed to cover everything that we need our new superintendent to be able to do all the skill sets? Um, no. No, uh, I think that the opening paragraph is very, very important because you school committee members, you know the rubric that you use to evaluate the superintendent. Well, you are expecting competence, professional, ac across every aspect. You don't want to have an area where there's a deficit. But given that, you, you, there are some areas where you really want them to have real strength, you know, A plus strength. And, and that's what the profile is, is you want to see, you, you want the screening committee to hone in on that and really ask questions to, to, to get at that. And, you know, you have, let me just see your, your list here, I'm not talking specific, but systemic equity. You want somebody not, who not just agrees that it's a good thing, but has real experiences, can talk to, to sometimes not even how they would do it but how they have done it and how they what they what they have done you want to have proven skill in certain areas and that's what you're determining is what are the areas you want absolutely proven skill and that doesn't mean that you're not looking for somebody who's not good with budgets it's not good with with facilities management those types of things but we're trying to tease out what the community said Without this, no. Without deep skills in these areas, then the person isn't isn't a match. Um, and just to sort of follow up a little bit, and we'll see if folks have some questions. Um, what you just said about the match, I think, is really important. Um, we assume a certain we're going to assume a certain level of competence, um, and obviously, we need to ask about that and ensure that. But we don't need to go into the specific questions about that because we'll understand the questions to ask to make sure um, and we'll also be able to see through um, some things through their resumes through candidates resumes um, but what are the things 
that you really need in order to be successful here at DS. Because we are, we're lots of things, but we're also very unique, I think, um, because we are, because we excel so much in so many areas and we demand excellence across the board. Um, and also for everyone that this document is not the only thing that we use to determine who will be our next superintendent. This is just one facet of the process. Um, and that, for instance, when we as a school committee meet with the finalists, there will be an opportunity to ask questions um, that probably don't stray too far from I'm sure won't stray too far from the things that we hint at, but maybe dive into much deeper detail that we could not cover in a one page document. Um, so what we saw initially from NESDEC was, I don't know, 35 pages. Five pages. <laughs> so um, we had to then create a one page document with, you know, about something like less than 20 bullet points. Um, so we couldn't cover everything, but there will be an opportunity when we meet with them, we meet with finalists to drill even deeper. And if you if you go on a site visit, you are also, and, and when you make reference calls, you want to, to find indicators of whatever you choose to put in your profile. You know, if you say it's important, you should look for that and, and figure out before you go on your site visit, what what you might see that would let you know that that um, the person is is really good in these areas. But we'll be with you, NASDAQ will be with you through the whole process. We're not going to walk away now, we're, we're just getting started. So we'll be here for any questions you have and, and getting you ready for all of the things like going on your site visits and planning your interviews and training your screening committee. Does anybody have any questions about the purpose of the candidate profile or how the data was Judy, did you? I understand the purpose from our perspective, but from the perspective of the candidates, is this a document that, that's used in, in any sense in a marketing, you know, um, sort of to market us to potential um, candidates, or is it strictly for us to describe what we're looking for? It's, it's both. It is for when you can see that Art Betancourt is on as well. Um, he's the director of NESDEC. When we're taught, when candidates call us and say, you know, I see Dover Sherburn is open. Talk to me about that. We have this. We might not pull it out and read it in front of them, but we, we've done the work and we know what people are thinking about and looking at, and we can discuss that with them. We also meet any number of potential candidates. We're in New England, we're at, not this year, but we're at conferences, we're out there, we're talking to people, people know us, they're calling us, and somebody might say, you know, keep an eye out for a position you think might be a match for me. And we look at something like this profile, we look at the district, and, and Art will make phone calls, or I'll make phone calls, and we'll talk to potential candidates. So we use it for both. And candidates will go on the NESDAQ website, which we'll have linked, <clears throat> excuse me, to yours, and they'll read it. And if they see, if they don't see themselves there, then they might self-select out um, and vice versa. But also just to clarify that uh, the position has been opened and they've been receiving applications mm. since sometime in September, early October. Right. Right, as um, soon as it was announced, yeah. Right, and and the um, applications are closing in about another 10 days, I think, about. So um, this is not a primary recruiting tool. And in fact, oh. it's not the first document that we've created. We created a cover letter that covers some of, some of this. Right. In much broader strokes. Um, that is our primary marketing tool. This is much more, I think as Carolyn, stated is much more of a self-selecting. Um, if people are looking at this and they say, mm, I'm not really, I'm not really into collaboration. Maybe this isn't a good district for them. Um, right. Or a good position for them. Thank you. Does anybody else have, Lynn? Is there anything, well, I guess I'm saying it the wrong way, but is what in this document sets us 
apart from other districts, whether it's just, you know, something that it, are, we have higher expectations or different expectations, what's... Well, yeah, if you think of a continuum of skills and expectations for a community, there, the, we've written profiles where uh, facility, they're going to build a new high school, or they're going to, they're going to expand the high school, or look at, or move to project-based learning or something. So some districts are really looking for facilities management, working with municipalities, knowledge of that whole budget aspect of that. Other communities are looking for um, somebody with real curriculum expertise. Some communities might have issues with special education, and they're really looking for somebody who can can lead that in the direction they want to go. So it's not that you don't want any of those things. You do, <clears throat> but they're not the primary lens that you're using. The same way with with those communities, it's not that they they don't value um, systemic equity, but it, it doesn't come up because they have other issues that are in the fore. Does that answer your question, Lynn? It does. Yeah. Thank you. And Lynn, just a, a, an additional point. Um, the the candidates did receive a, a school profile um, that we put together as as Anne mentioned. That was one of the documents that kind of talks more about what what are some of the unique characteristics, uh, such as having a you know a three district school system being two towns, um, high performing. So so those types of things are in that school or school system profile. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, if school committee folks do, um, just speak up because I can't, it's two pages, can't see everybody. Um, all right. Um, so thank you so much, Carolyn, for that overview. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for all the work that you did in the community outreach. My pleasure. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, and for members of the community, this is not what we've done so far is not the only opportunity for people to participate in the process. Once the finalists are announced, there will be um, opportunities to meet with them to ask some questions that we will um, as have a school open school committee meeting where we ask questions and then there will be an opportunity for members of the public to also ask questions then. Um, I'm not sh quite sure how the school visit will take place because usually that's a place where people can also ask questions we have to figure out some of that um but there it, there are opportunities so um we will certainly be publicizing that so that you can participate further if you so desire um carolyn do you have thoughts about how that might take place right we've we've done that we had to switch to online all spring. So what we did is the candidate would be online, of course, for the day. And then uh, first grade teachers might be scheduled in at a certain time or out, you know, one to three teachers and um, three to six teachers, however you want to do it. And they would have their own Zoom time with the candidate. However you, you know, however you want to set that up, we'll work with you to make sure that everybody who wants to meet the candidate can. We'll just have to figure how to do it in a community as large with as many involved members uh, as you have. We'll have to tweak it a little bit, I think. So TBD, but we'll certainly let folks know when those opportunities are coming up. Um, what I'd like to, oh, sorry, Brooke. Sorry, I just wanted to ask, um, is it too early to make any um, generalizations about candidates in this very strange climate? Are we, I mean, the number of candidates versus are people coming from other parts of the country? Um, are, are there any kind of generalizations you can make at, at this point to kind of orient us and also to set expectations maybe? And if it's too soon to do that, you know, be perfectly honest. It, it might be too soon. Art, do you want to feel that one or? No. <laughs> He's muted. Okay. So we. Um, I can, I can, I'm sorry. I couldn't find the mute button. 
<laughs> um, I, I agree with you, Carolyn. It's a little, it's a little too soon uh, to be actually uh, talking too much about the applicant pool in a public way. Um, and part of the reason for that is sometimes your public uh, comments about the applicant pool can actually affect the development of the applicant pool over time. And we've got another 10 days uh, or so for applicants to, to complete their application process. And the last few days tend to be um, pretty productive days. So I would suggest to you that we, if we can be patient for a little longer, um, that would be to, to your benefit, I think. Yeah, and to, and to add to that, the process is confidential and people are really um, concerned no matter what search they're in, that their application remain confidential because they might jeopardize their current position if their name gets out. So what we've found is that we receive, they don't want their application sitting around anywhere. And we usually receive the applications last three or four days of the search so we we i mean we've been receiving them all along but like art said the 10 days in our field is is really early in the process so. maggie um assuming that we approve this draft or you know some near version of it tonight is that something that the folks at nesdet can use to go out to you know, encourage candidates that you might know of out in the marketplace who might fit some of the things that we're really looking for in our profile is I guess my first question, is that something they can use to do a little bit of outreach? And um, what are the layers of outreach that we might be using if we want to get beyond just Metro West Boston in terms of increasing the diversity of our candidate pool? Is there anything that, you know, aside from folks knowing to go to the NESDEC website, how is it that folks will find us with this profile? Okay. Uh, do you want to take the Beyond the Metro West Boston piece? Sure. Um, first of all, we, we, I've already spoken to several uh, folks who might be interested in applying. And in fact, I uh, spoke to a representative of someone who is thinking of applying today. Sometimes it's a it's not a direct communication, but, but someone who contacts us. So that process has been going on now literally for weeks um, and will continue for the next few days. So there's, there's been a, a, a personal interaction, if you will, with several candidates. In addition to that, uh, we belong to um, an organization called the National School Development Council. I'm actually the executive director of the National Council as well, uh, which is a group of um, it's an organization made up of, of uh, uh, firms similar to ours, uh, many of them associated with colleges and universities. Um, UPenn, for example, Seton Hall, uh, University of Pittsburgh, those um, uh, and, and a number of others that, that, we, uh, that we communicate with and, and we recruit through. Um, and so there are ongoing conversations which with the members of the National Council as well. And um, we, uh, we sometimes get nominations. In fact, uh, in this case, we, we have been getting nominations. Um, and those come to me usually um, in the form of a, a quick note or a telephone call saying, Art, I really think so-and-so is, is a good match for this position. Would you mind giving them a call? And I've done that as well. Um, so the outreach has been has been quite extensive uh, over the past few weeks, and will continue right up uh, until the the uh, the application deadline, which is, I believe, November twelfth. Right, and we have a, a board of directors with superintendents from um, all over New England, and they immediately we have outreach in all of the New England states and across the country, but we're we're talking to them all the time about who who would they see might be who in their uh, superintendents group might be a match. The thing is, as I said before, so I apologize if if people are hearing it for the second time. When you recruit in the public sector, you can you're only asking the person if they will throw their hat in the ring. You cannot even tell them that they're going to get an interview. So you're asking them if they've got a job that they treasure or like or, or don't want to lose, uh, you're asking them to apply 
with no guarantee that they'll even get an interview. It's different when you're, I think, not that I have, but recruit in the private sector where if you give the person a call, they pretty much expect that they're going to get an interview because you've recruited them. So it's a little bit different in our field. We can, we try to say, hey, I think you should throw your hat in the ring, but NASDAQ doesn't influence the choice at all. The screening committee gets all the applications, gets the profile. We, you know, show them how to use the profile to go through the candidate, the applications and choose whom they're going to interview and how they're going to ask their questions. But we don't say, hey, by the way, we think that uh, Ann Harvey would be terrific. You know, we don't, we don't do that. So hopefully, Maggie, we will, it'll work the way it's supposed to. No, thank you so much for your details, both you and Art. I, I think that just, you know, especially for the folks on the call, understanding that process and understanding how it differs from the private sector, but how it also does involve targeted outreach and it right. is really important for folks to know. So thank you, I really appreciate it. And You're for welcome. me to know, so thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions from school committee folks? All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn and Art. Um, so what I think we will do now is we're gonna go on to talk about the candidate profile that um, school committee folks, you've all seen. Um, you've seen draft one, you've seen the update, which was sent yesterday. So hopefully you all have looked at that. Um, Michael's gonna try to share it. I, you, Brooke, you may have to give him screen sharing ability. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I could try it first. Um, yeah, I need that, Brooke, yeah. if you could, please. Uh, so while that's happening, um, if we just start with the first paragraph, I knew Judy had a quick, well, first, let's first just really quickly as we're gonna go, how we're gonna go over this, try to remember that this is an overview um, of what we would like in a candidate. We know that we cannot get at every possible nuance and detail. Um, and it's also what we tried to take under consideration is um, the input from a large number of people. So um, even if you, have a, if you have a thought, it doesn't mean that it's not a great, it might be a great thought, but if it's not one that's necessarily shared by a number of people, um, then perhaps that's something that you can choose to keep as your part of your question when we interview the finalists, if that's something that's really important to you. Um, all right. Is that showing okay? It is. Thank, Thank you. Um, and can you edit as we go? Yep, I can. Yeah, I can. You can just zoom it in a little bit. So yeah, the old folks can't, we can't read it. <laughs> sure. I'm going to get my glasses. Yes. I also, this also makes it really hard. I can only I, I, I have a huge screen. So just tell me when it looks good enough. I'll just keep on going. That's getting in the right direction. Maybe a tiny bit more. <laughs> um, so also then when people have comments, um, I now can only see four people. So school committee folks, I think we're just going to have to be respectful of each other, but just sort of jump in. That's good. Because um, yeah. I can't see hands. Mm -hmm. um, that's All better. Right. People raise their hands on the internet and I can see them and tell you. Oh, can you? Oh, thank you, Maggie. Um, so if you re raise your hand virtually, then we'll go th that way. Um, all right. So if we start with the first paragraph. Judy, um, move your hands up. Sorry? Say again. Judy, Judy Miller's hands. Okay, yep. Yeah, Judy, thank you. Yeah, so on the first paragraph, the one thing that I think, and it's interesting because the question is, one thing that I think is important in this first paragraph, it says, says that we expect a high level of competence. And in fact, I, I would say that we expect excellence across all aspects of the position. And, and I say that because it's important to recognize who we are. And, and I think that, that that really is what we expect and sort of who we are. You know, you can, you can argue about whether that's a good thing or not, 
that, that that's who we are, but I think it is. I, or I think, I think that it's important for us to get that across, um, you know, that, that that's what the expectation is. People have thoughts about that? Agree, disagree? Let's see. How do I see more people? Um, all right. So, so we'll keep that. And at the end, what we'll do is we'll just we'll vote with the changes. I hadn't really thought through how we're going to do that part. Um, I, I think I agree. Mm. That ex with excellence, um, I think that's a good change. Um, if we go down to then the four areas, um, the collaborative leadership, systemic equity, exemplary communication, and whole child education. Did folks have specific uh, thoughts or comments about those? Are we okay with those? And then we'll go into the bigger pictures, the, the, big, the, the collaborative leadership and all the um, bullet points underneath. Maggie's hand is up. Sure, I, I just, my only feedback is I applaud these four things. I am really proud of our community that these are the four things that rose to the forefront in terms of what we want the next leader to focus on. I think they speak to wanting to build on the strengths of our current leadership and the work that's been done in terms of organizing and strategic planning and, and all that, and really move us into the next, um, next uh, area of where we know we need to grow. So um, really nice job to anyone who participated on any of those things and how these ideas rose to the top makes me really excited about where we're going next. Thank you, Maggie Brooke. Yeah, thanks, Meg. I just want to echo that because I did, if you didn't have a chance to look at the documents, um, you know, deep dive into the data today, I did that, like 50 something pages. And these really did come out very strongly as kind of the key issues, which are, yeah, I had some extra time today. But I really, it really is a, a very succinct uh, capture of that data. So I uh, applaud uh, you all who put this together that this came out very, very strongly. So, thank you. thanks for reading through that. Uh, it's a, it's quite a, quite a slog. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's interesting. It, it was interesting. I would, I would recommend if anyone has a minute to, to do it because I think it does capture a snapshot of where we are. And there's some very differing opinions, of course, um, some right next to each other, but that's, you know, kind of the nature of, of the beast in the system. So. Um, but yes, these, these definitely were the ones that rose to the top. So thank you for capturing. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so let's look under collaborative leadership. Um, I know that there are a few people who had some thoughts underneath collaborative, for uh, potential changes for collaborative leadership. Can you hear me? It's Nancy. Nancy, yes, I can hear you, go ahead. Oh. Had to my I'm having unstable network. Oh, oh hold on. I'm unstable at home, so I apologize. So I just switched to my iPhone and I can't get my camera to work. But is this okay right now, or do you have to see my face? No, this is fine. Thank. Okay. Okay. The um. Um, the, 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 when I read the section of collaborative leadership and just thinking of leadership in general, one of the areas I think that um, we might want to consider putting in there is really um, where, where something I thought that was missing is um, someone with vision that, you know, able to, um, you know, um, do some uh, can construct a vision, create a vision, and then take the team towards that vision. Um, I feel that's important for any leader, but especially uh, for a superintendent. So that's one area um, in this section that I thought we could consider adding. Um, do other people have to, other thoughts or changes or thoughts about adding constructive creative vision or whether that they feel that that's already contained 
within underneath collaborative leadership. I guess my perspective, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I, I would think that um, not just under collaborative, collaborative leadership, but perhaps implicit in the, the profile throughout um, would be the, the vision um, and the concept of vision. You know, one of the other things that, that um, I had kind of, uh, I guess, advocated for being a top line item was, um, was empathy, which did come out a lot in the, in the raw data um, and it was kind of similarly pointed out that it's it's kind of embedded um, in the in the profile as a whole, um, and something that that ought to come out um, in discussion. So, um, I mean, I think we could include it, but at the same time, I think perhaps it's it's already implicit. I I I. I... I can understand that. I just also think like guides, delegates, and empower staff is implicit in leadership as well. So I just wasn't sure, you know, when I when I'm stack, you know, putting, you know, looking and seeing what, you know, what we could be missing or what we might not need. Many things under this leadership, you know, is an implicit fact under leadership. But um, I might be looking at it too much in a linear, too linearly, I guess. Does the last bullet? get to it future focused leader is that what the intent was yes i th think that's mm. that's what it was and, and it was um yeah that mm -hmm. is i think the intent just different words and i think that that's part of it i feel i agree with you nancy that it, that vision is really important um but i feel like we tried to get at that just maybe use some different words um the other so the other thing oh sorry can i the other thing you know yep. other words that go along with it strategic thinker strategic minded i don't see strategy as a leadership kind of quality under the collaborative leadership again this is just words and maybe i'm picking this apart too much i'm not even picking it apart um and then innovation as a leader you know um dealing and you know there's a big change there's a bunch of different changes that we're undergoing and um you know uh, was this person part of it? What's the experiences of leading through change? Um, so that that's it for me on this section. Thank you, Nancy. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, I think our thought was the growth mindset was part of the innovation. Um, and, but I think that I think it's really hard because we all want to make sure that everything is included and you can't unfortunately include everything. So what we need to decide is, is including um, something about strat strategy or vision more important than something else that's included here. Um, and what we can do is we can have this discussion and then in the motion, um, part of what's included is then allowing the, giving the search team the authority to make some minor changes as appropriate based on our discussions tonight. Um, and that then we can though, then go off and make the changes, make small minor changes. And for instance, change some wording so that if we decide the strategy needs to be involved, because we don't have to come up with the exact wording tonight. Mark, do you have something? Uh, um, no, uh, not much to add, but I do want to recognize I agree that there were elements of strategic thinking and outside of the box thinking in the raw data. And we did try to build it into this document. So if folks feel that it could be better represented here, then we're open to um, phrasing as Michael's putting in suggestions here in red. Do you, um, do you want to get to the level of making a a wordsmithing suggestion or do you want to leave that to the committee? I don't want to go down the rabbit hole too much, but I did have a, a thought that might incorporate that. Go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. Um, no, I think it's excellent, but I, I think um, in bullet point six where it says effectively brings people together to 
develop a vision or strategy, um, determine a plan and create change over time. Could, you know, we could wordsmith it in, into there. I think, yeah, determine a plan. Okay, and then our- I, I, I have some things I put together that I sent to Anne that Anne- Oh, sorry, okay. Share. Okay, our staff. Yeah, un unfortunately, it's unfortunately, I only had a little bit of time. I didn't even have time to respond to you because I had to go to the RSC meeting before this one. That's okay. You can take them or just, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, but it's, it's good, though, if people want to say, like, if Nancy, if you want to even say one of your things now, we can, then it helps everybody be able to see what the changes are and, or potential changes are, and they may feel more comfortable saying, okay, go ahead, figure out which one works best. You guys can go take it. Okay, my are just kind of, uh, um, okay. Uh, for the leadership one, um, proven leadership ability with skis, uh, skis, with skills and vision, ideation and implementation, collaboration, creative problem solving, intelligent risk taking and team building. Or, or and, uh, good strategic instincts, instincts and long term vision, the ability to address both big, picture issues and details. Hmm. Sorry, I feel like we lost yeah. you then. You want mute, Nancy? No, oh, did you not hear the whole thing or no? No. Oh, yeah, I have to, okay. You're gonna Sorry. see my ceiling. Okay, it's kind of long-winded and maybe hard to yeah. see without seeing it in writing, but I'll just, you know, uh, decision and implementation, collaboration, creative problem solving, intelligent risk taking, and team building, or kind of a different version of that is good strategic instincts and long-term vision, the ability to address both big picture issues and detailed day-to-day -day concerns. Yeah, so we probably won't be able to type all that in, but at least people can hear some mm -hmm. of what the, the thought process is to make some changes there. Um, do people have other thoughts about the suggested changes um, or other things under collaborative leadership? And I had one thing that was actually in the sentence above, just delayed, oh, delayed sorry, reaction, yep. but... The successful candidate will establish evidence of experience and expertise in the following ways. I was wondering if we should um, incorporate the concept of commitment. Successful candidate will establish evidence of a commitment to the following things because you can you can have experience in communication, but you got to be committed to, <laughs> or you know maybe more like systemic equity. You may have experience in it, but it's critical for that person to be committed to that. So uh, yeah, I, actually, I, yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, I would want to keep, yeah, I'd mind making an and rather than a remove. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think, I think that the experience and expertise is helpful in a lot of Absolutely, yeah, ways. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you. All right. Other, other folks, anything else about collaborative leadership thoughts? about what we've been talking about, your own addition now. Um, all right, so we move on down to systemic equity. Um, and I know people, we can talk at the end, there are some thoughts about the order of these. Um, we can certainly talk about that, but I'd like to talk about that at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, do people feel like we're getting what we need to under systemic equity? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll move on if we need, if people need to come back. We can. Um, exemplary communication. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we've found how important, Nancy, one second, we found how important communication is. Um, 
during these times uh, because things are changing so fast. And um, so I think that we've really found that it's really an essential part of the job that may not have been something we would have thought about quite as much before. Sorry, Nancy, go ahead. Um, you know, it would be great um, maybe if they could demonstrate their media savviness or they have, you know, I know you're using a wide variety of media, but I think it would be very benefit, beneficial to us um, since we don't have an really in-house, you know, marketing communicator or PR person to have someone that's with some track record of uh, using the, you know, many different varieties of media to get the message out. Yep. Nancy, I, I agree with the point, and I think that's something we would be asking about um, when we would be talking about that first bullet point and asking them about, you know, how, how do you and what is your experience with? So I think that there would be pointed questions around that. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any other thoughts about it? I have one thing. Oh, mm -hmm. um, I just, with the communication, I was, uh, the word invites keeps coming up to me, um, invites community input, and I'm not quite sure where exactly it would fit, um, but I like the active um, verb of inviting the feedback rather than just being approachable and visible. Um, but I, hearing and building trust with all constituencies, uh, maybe it could built in, be built into that. I just, I like the, um, the idea of inviting the feedback and we can actually look back and see um, how someone has approached um, that kind of, those kind of situations in the past. Mm -hmm. a good Thanks, suggestion. Connie. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Mark, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I like that suggestion. Definitely a keyword. Anybody else have any thoughts about, about communication? Hmm? All right. Can you? Oh no, it's still there. Okay. Whole child education. And I have to say, this I felt like this we had to encompass a lot under this. This was a very broad. Um, what whole child education means varies. Uh, person to person to some degree. Um, so we had felt like we had to really cover a lot of material under this one. So feedback is appreciated or thoughts. But go ahead, Nancy. Just quick, would we ever put challenge six to see if they have direct experience or or the like or other, you know, experience with other administering or leading other innovative educational, um, you know, uh, strategies within a school system? Just a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know what other people think, but I feel like the candidates are probably going to ask us um, about challenge success, since that's something that what we're kind of known for. Um, and then from that, we can certainly follow up with them more about programs that they also have access, they've accessed or have led. Um, I think that's a really good point, Nancy. Um, do folks feel like we cover that and what we're saying, you know, innovative programs. Yeah, um, his head. Oh, Maggie, yeah. Sorry, I can never find the raise hand button. I, I feel like we do, and it's actually one of the things that I'm curious about when they come for interviews or when they come to finalists is, um, you know, the sort of the best ones. Um, have done their homework and they do research on the things we're doing and they talk about them or they talk about their accomplishments with them. So um, it's always really interesting to me to see to what extent folks are familiar with this program or other programs. And I think that um, it, it, my experience having done these before is that they come out or they don't come out in terms of their experience with those sorts of, um, you know, 
stuff. Um, I loved the addition of the invites feedback from. I think that's really um, an interesting point that um, a lot of folks, you know, it's a big push in terms of DESI, um, folks, teachers getting feedback from students, uh, you know, administrators getting feedback from, you know, just sort of this whole feedback cycle. And I think it's really important to include that. Um, I don't know, I'm sort of rambling. And just to, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Sarah, you, I just, jump in and you raise your hand. So why don't you go? <laughs> go right ahead, Michael. Uh, I, thanks. Uh, quickly, I just to, to Maggie's point, um, one of the other things we, we did discuss um, as a, a subcommittee is um, our core values and actually decided that, that similar to, to Maggie's point, um, it would be interesting to see um, what they, the candidates learn about us. And um, challenge success would certainly be something we'd expect to hear from candidates. Um, similar core values we'd, be, we'd expect to hear from them. And it's kind of, I, I won't tell the green m and story, but for anybody who knows the green m and story, it's kind of like our green m and Oh, dude, now I'm so curious. <laughs> exactly. Just you can text me. <laughs> Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the way that this section treats academic achievement and social emotional well being as going hand in hand with each other. Too often, I think they're presented as sort of separate or opposing concepts. Um, and I think personally, I'd like to see a superintendent who is striving for excellence in all those regards um, and who understands that our students are going to perform their best academically, whatever that means to the student, when they are supported well um, in terms of their social and emotional growth too. Um, so I thought that this section really did a nice job at um, at balancing uh, those very interrelated and important concepts. Thank you, Sarah. And I would just say that it, that was something that we agreed came out loud and clear in all of the data, that excellence on both fronts was really important to a lot of people. So we're just really reflecting back what we heard from the community. Um, so thank you to the community for really taking into consideration the health and well-being of our students, not just the academic success. Um, to go back to Maggie's question and then a little bit about what Michael just said, part of what we also have been discussing and has been my experience, and now this is my third superintendent search, um, we can tell as much about a, um, a candidate from what they know about us or what they ask about as from how they answer our questions. And so in some ways, we don't want to fill in every possible blank here because then we, all we will get is what they think we want to hear um, because they will have researched it and then they'll say, oh, look, they want this. And then they'll see, they'll go and look about, up about that a little bit more. Um, we want to really know what they think and what they're bringing, not just what they think that we want to hear. And so in some cases, we almost choose not to fill in all of the blanks. Um, and then if they ask us about it, that tells us a lot about how they think um, and how they would fit into the community as, and how they think of themselves as a learner themselves. Um, one of the things that people talked about, well, we all talked about in the last school committee workshop was about uh, people who don't think they know everything. Um, I forget the phrase, I think it was Judy who came up with it. Um, perfectly imperfect or something like that. Um, Conscious incompetence. Yes, Conscious that was Lynn. Thank you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I love that Lynn. <laughs> um, and we thought about putting that in here, but then we thought, you know what, that's actually something that we really need to decide for ourselves because someone can't say, I'm consciously incompetent because that doesn't hold water. So I think that that's sort of a, maybe a frame, a mindset to look at this a little bit um, in that we want people to be curious about us also and ask questions based on what they see here or maybe what they don't see. 
because um, that tells us a whole lot about the candidates. Well, and that makes me want to advocate to take out what I suggested putting in the commitment to, because that we, we should let them show us their commitment. Mm. I don't want to overthink it, but well, yeah, wants. yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's that's part of it. Um, and I think for us to realize too that this is not a be all end all document. This is not a strategic plan. Um, and this is not the only thing that we are using to determine who we will hire as our next superintendent. Mm -hmm. It is. It provides us with one other tool to help us in that process. Um, so you're right. We can really overthink a lot. But we don't need to. Um, do people have any other thoughts or comments about whole child education? Uh, Kate has her hand up. I can't tell. Oh, Kate, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, yes, yeah, sorry, I can't see everybody either. Um, this is not specific to the whole child, but um, kind of coming off the last couple of comments, as I was reading through this very well written and well thought out draft, thank you, um, I found myself uh, wanting to, you know, asking, thinking of more and more follow-up questions and how are you going to show me this or that and this and that and realizing that that's not, that's not what we're trying to do here on this first page, I think. And to your point, Anne, we don't want to show our hand and give them all the answers that we're looking for. Like, for example, with systemic equity, you know, I, I was thinking, um, well, show me, what does it look like? What have you done? What are you going to do? All these things, but, but um, I guess those are things, and tell me if I'm wrong, but those are things that we would um, follow up on in interviews and subsequent um, meetings. What? <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, undo that. This is awful. <laughs> How do we make this go away? Stop video. All right. What did I do? You're making funny faces. <laughs> I saw Anne was trying to speak, so I like it. Yeah. It's okay, but that's that's right on. I mean, that's yeah. what, you know, this is is kind of the the framework for questions and and where the both the the screening committee as well as uh, 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 with the finalists um, in the interview process, we'll be kind of drawing from this profile to craft questions and and also follow up and probe you know around. So if they don't address it proactively, um, we will have opportunity to ask clarifying questions um, that might be on the tip of our minds. Yes, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Maggie uh, had a question. I mean, I, it's a brief comment. I 100% I agree with Kate. I, I want to echo. You know, um, I, I specifically around equity in particular, I, I think, um, you know, a very open ended question. I, I'm almost hoping that this almost screens out folks for whom this isn't, that that work is not interesting to them. You know, there's folks for whom that's not really where they wanna go and I want them to know that we might not be the right match for them. And, you know, yeah, we're gonna to wanna to hear specifically what kind of work have they done and where are they going? But um, I think it's less important that we name all the things and more important that people like do a self-evaluation of if they're a right match with this profile. I think that that's true. I think that there is, a, as Carolyn mentioned earlier, this is there's a degree of self-selection based on this. Um, let's say I apologize. Uh, we, we have a wasp nest in our house that we're getting yeah. removed, and I've got a wasp in here that's buzzing around, and I'm a little, little parent. <laughs> so if I'm making jerking movements, it's because I, um, I'm trying to get away from it. Um, so, but so Maggie, thank you very much for that and um do people have any other final thoughts or with our, i mentioned that we would talk about a couple people had mentioned that they thought maybe we should switch the order of the bullet of the major topics um 
we won't go into switching bullet points underneath. I don't think that makes sense. But the major ones, collaborative leadership, systemic equity, exemplary communication and whole child education. We're not trying to indicate that we value more than the other um, when we were creating the order. Um, but if people think that there is something that could, that would work better or would better show what our priorities are, then go ahead and speak up. Well, if we're, if we're really trying not to show preference, I mean, we could just put them in alphabetical order and not have to uh, weight them in that way, because I think that gets tricky, but that would be an, an easy out in my opinion. Yeah, I think that that, that might that might make that might make good sense. Um, I agree with you. It's, it gets hard when you try to wait because people don't agree, and it's all we're all saying. This is what's important. All that's important. Um, okay. Do people have any final questions or thoughts about this document? And if not, then I'm gonna. So I'll just two two words of uh, yeah. or or points of clarification. The the at least what's intended is the bracketed items would be for the subcommittee to kind of consider further, um, perhaps in, in wordsmithing or inclusion or, or not inclusion. The non-bracketed items um, would be as, as amended, um, so we wouldn't do anything further with that. And then the numbering will probably have a conversation around whether we go alpha by the all caps or the initial. All right, so um, I'm gonna make this. You're gonna get stung, Kat. Sorry. I'm gonna make a motion. Um, the motion to accept the 2020 candidate profile as presented with edits as stated and subject to clarifying edits as determined by the superintendent search team. Do we have to do um, this by our separate committee? We, I was gonna say, I'm gonna make the right, I make the motion that we have to do it by separate committees. So if I hand it over to Brooke to negotiate how it gets done. Okay. Um, does Michael want to take off the screen? Oh no, I guess we should leave it on while we're doing this or should we take it off so we can see people? It might make it easier. I think we can do it regardless. Mm. Right. You can slide your bar sideways to see more people if you'd like though. Like I can see everyone here. Um, there's a divider between Michael's screen and the rest of us. So. I make no comment, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so for the region, do you, Maggie, do you wanna take it first? Sure, I, I'm just gonna say gratuitous. Some of us have to do this every single day with so many children that we've learned some tricks. <laughs> That's all, it's nobody just, we, we know the tricks. Right. Yes, for the region, if you could unmute yourself, um, I, I am looking for folks to make Anne's motion as stated by Anne just a few moments ago. Um, Anne will make the motion. So moved by Anne Hubby, second. Kate Potter, second. Thank you, second by Kate Potter. If you could unmute yourself, I'm taking a quick roll call vote. Michael Jaffe. Michael Jaffe, yes. Anne Hubby. Anne Hubby, yes. Lynn Collins. Lynn Collins, yes. Judy Miller. Judy Miller, yes. Kate Potter. Hey Potter, yes. And Maggie Sharon, yes. Now back to you, Brooke. Thanks, Maggie. Angie, do you want to take Sherburn? Sure. Sherburn, if you'll take yourself off of mute, and I can't see everybody, so I'm just going to call it out. Do I have somebody who can make a motion? And if you do, say your name and then do it because I can't see everybody. Maggie, Maggie motion. <laughs> Nancy Cordell, second. Thank you. So everybody off mute, I'm just gonna make a roll call. Mike? Mike Fitzgerald, yes. Um, Amanda? Amanda Brown, yes. Nancy? Nancy Cordell, yes. Megan? Megan Page, yes. And Angie Johnson, yes. Thanks, Angie. Okay, Dover, if you wanna take yourselves off mute, and Leslie, you're back. I just saw you. There you are. Um, Deborah, do I have a motion of the same? Mark Healy, so moved. 
Thank you, Mark. And a second? Sarah, second. Sarah, second. Any discussion? Nope. Okay, I do a roll call. Mark? Mark Healy, yes. Sarah? Sarah Gutierrez done, yes. Colleen? Colleen Burt, yes. And Leslie? Leslie Zian, yes. And Brooke Matarik, yes. Okay, um, thank you. Anything else that we need to know, uh, Anne, or any upcoming dates or information? Uh, so, that, so just so people know that in the next uh, week, 10 days, we'll be announcing the screening committee. Um, and then we will announce a little bit of the further, about further dates on the other side, like when we will be doing interviews. But once we start interviews, um, we basically go underground. It, it's all done in executive session. You can't share any of that um, until the other side when the screening committee will recommend some finalists. Um, and that's when then the, the school committee picks it back, uh, the ball back up again. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about that further since we're still trying to figure out dates and details. Um, it depends a little bit on what the situation is um, with COVID and seeing where we are as a district. Mm -hmm. So, and as always, if people have questions, please reach out to me, Mark Healy, or Angie, or Michael Jaffe. Um, we're happy to answer your questions at any time. Um, and thank you also to Carolyn and Art and Ms. Deck. Are you hoping? Librarian number three. Yes, thank you. Being here. Right. So thank you, everybody. Do we need to uh, poll to adjourn, or can we just adjourn? I Does anyone know? We're good. we're good? I think we're good. I'm going to go with that. Thank All you. Right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank everyone. You.